Through the Australian Government Reef Trust funding, reef catchments have undertaken streambank and gully remediation works across 33 key sites in Murray Creek, St Helens Creek and the O'Connell River. There were four main remediation methods used. These include engineered works in the form of pile fields, insulation of rock groins and large woody debris structures, stream bank revegetation to reinstate an effective riparian zone, weed control to remove exotic species and riparian fencing for stock exclusion. Many sites had a combination of these activities and all activities are supported by an education package aimed at improving landholders' knowledge and in turn the management of their streams. So how are these sites successfully implemented? And also, how do you define success for such river rehabilitation activities? Reef Catchments considers site success through not only the numerical outcome of trees planted and sediment saved, but also through the establishment of strong community relationships with landholders, consultants and contractors. This demonstrates that a regional ecosystem of providers can functionally work together to produce a quality outcome. Initially identifying cost-effective sites was achieved through prioritisation studies to understand areas with high historic erosion rates. External consultants were engaged to create technical assessments and a digital elevation model, DEM of difference, for our key river systems. This DEM of difference uses high-resolution LIDAR data from 2009 and 2018 to compare changes in elevation and provides an estimate of sediment volume lost and the erosional process at each site. This provided confidence in site selection and a great foundation for site planning. Another important aspect for cost effectiveness is having a sufficient understanding of what can be realistically achieved on ground. Taking into consideration available resources, expert opinions from engineers and contractors, and habitat values. Creating catchment stories or running walking the landscape workshops with local landholders is also important for understanding the context of a catchment and creating a knowledge base that can inform things like site access, contributing greatly to understanding the realistic achievability of investing in certain sites. Due to reef catchment's unique locality, our catchments are at a manageable and short scale compared to other NRM regions. Therefore, we have access to local rock quarries and sawmills, with environmental and construction contractors living locally as well. This results in reef catchments being able to save on project costs in terms of product cartage, while having ready access to work crews without needing to pay for additional expenses such as travel. Along Murray Creek, rehabilitation work has been completed on a continuous 20 kilometre length of stream bank, encompassing works such as revegetation, engineered solutions and stock exclusion fencing. One of the engineered and revegetation sites along Murray Creek is MC3, which includes three separate rehabilitation areas infringing an 18 hectare grazing paddock. Interestingly, the most upstream site, despite it being calculated to lose the least amount of sediment, was prioritised first due to the potential of an avulsion forming and cutting off the paddock, thereby heavily affecting the downstream areas. For MC3, engineered designs were provided by Alluvium Consulting, and this involved bank reprofiling, insulation of log pile fields, and rock armouring of the bank. Approximately 6,500 native plants were then installed across these three areas. Plant selection is based off Queensland Government Regional Ecosystem Guidelines and usually involves a diversity of mature plant heights, rooting depths and plant growth speed. The wooden pile fields, which act to slow the flow of water against the bank, are estimated to last at this site for approximately 10 years. It is during this time that the revegetation can fully establish and self-maintain, thereby taking over the primary role of providing bank resistance. MC3 has largely been a success in preventing stream bank erosion, with an estimate of 493 tonnes of sediment saved from reaching the coast each year from this site. This is at a cost of $474,000. That's $961 per tonne per year at the 0.4 effectiveness rating. Or, if a 0.7 effectiveness rating is applied, that's 872 tonnes are saved at the coast, with a cost of $549 per tonne per year. In the lower estuarine reaches of Murray Creek, successful revegetation sites are MC1 and MC2. Across these sites, 4,260 native tube stock have been planted over 0.72 hectares. Total site costs here are approximately $160,000, the majority of which was spent on maintenance and watering. Together, MC1 and MC2 have been calculated to save 266 tonnes of sediment being delivered to the coast each year. 
which costs $575 per tonne per year. Originally, engineered solutions had been planned for MC1 and MC2. However, the price of permits for bank stabilisation in estuarine environments was not cost effective. Therefore, revegetation is the primary rehabilitation activity undertaken here, with a sacrificial buffer of approximately 2 metres put in place between the revegetation and the river's edge. Another initial limitation at this site was cost-effective watering, as it was not viable to water using the river. Hand watering by contractors has been used in the past, but this is also expensive. A groundwater bore was therefore drilled to offer a more affordable and longer-term solution for watering these sites. Another way we saved watering costs here was by planting during particular months, such as November and December at the start of the wet season, thereby utilising the increased rainfall while there is less risk of major flood events. Further north in the O'Connell River, OC10 is an engineered and revegetation site that has installed pile fields, bank toe rock armouring and 6,000 native plants. OC10 is a great example of how the best approach to site remediation and ultimately site success stems from installing a diversity of practical techniques along with a highly engaged and proud landholder, all of which work together to restore riparian health. To secure long-term outcomes, Adequate maintenance periods, including a watering regime, are required to outcompete weeds and allow for proper habitat development. This needs to be agreed upon at the planning stage of the project, as appropriate time and financial provisions are needed for a long-term focus on site success. Understanding landholder values and local land knowledge is critical and must accompany technical understanding of a catchment. Sites that are carefully considered from an expert and technical point of view, but lack input of local knowledge and don't consider the best interests of the landholders, are far less likely to be successful over the long term. This is because, post the Reef Trust 4 maintenance period, the landholders will be the primary individuals managing the rehabilitation sites. Reef catchments therefore invest heavily into landholder engagement and information sharing, ensuring that landholders are involved throughout the whole project process from planning and design to implementation and maintenance. This fosters a sense of ownership over the site and creates project buy-in, also making landholders more interested in supporting future projects. Furthermore, fostering strong relationships with contractors is important for securing long-term project success. Where possible, reef catchment sources local contractors to deliver on-ground project works. In our experience, helping build local capacity may be more of a process in the beginning. However, through strengthening these relationships and upskilling local contractors, they often go the extra mile to ensure success of a site. Additionally, local contractors have a significant knowledge base and experience with works throughout our region and are constantly assisting with technical input of on-ground works, particularly around the design, installation and revegetation establishment phases. So overall, what are we proud of, what worries us, and what would we like to see happen next? We're proud of strong landholder relationships that have been developed over the course of the project. Reef Catchments has successfully engaged more than 30 landholders to undertake project work on their land. We're proud of the local investment that Reef Trust 4 program has delivered through on-ground works, investing tens of thousands into local businesses. We're also proud of planting 58,800 native plants along riparian corridors constructing 18 kilometres of stock exclusion fencing with 20 off-stream watering points and installing nine major engineered sites across the region. We're worried about only planning for the short term and the inability to assess long-term success of our sites to then help inform future works within our region. Next time, we'd like to place more focus on maintenance, including longer maintenance contracts. We'd also like the chance to determine the effectiveness of our sites several years after their installation to better understand the long-term viability of engineered sites and the establishment of revegetation. A regional study assessing the catchment scale benefits of stream bank restoration would also be good.